the doctor sends you an endoscope for repair and all he says is that the scope's not working. Not working means that there's something wrong with it. Then you will need to find the problem and fix it. Some repairs might be simple, while others can be more complex. You might have a duodenoscope, a TJFQ180V, not making the angulation, or some puzzling insertion tube problem like blistering, buckling, or discoloration. Or you may have a foggy image on an image guide scope or moray patterns on your hybrid scope, or a blackout problem on your H190 scopes, and so on. It can take a lot of time to figure out what the problem is and what caused it, and how to go about fixing these issues. It's easier to have someone to work with you. Based on our years of experience with scope repair and engineering, we have concluded that there are four factors to be considered when addressing these problems with your scopes. One, Parts and material failure, two, technical errors, three, end user mishandling, four, OEM design flaws. Today, I would like to talk to you about some problematic OEM designs, things that many might not have noticed. The first example we have is a damaged light guide tube from a Storis. 11272BN. It has a thick elastic coating that detached from the inner monocoil and the connection fittings on both ends. We found that the outer coating was actually only held at both ends with a metal ring glued onto the tube and glued into the fittings. The separation most likely happened when the doctor pulled on the cable that stretched the elastic coating thin, breaking the glue bonds. Then it pulled away, exposing the monocoil and all the internals. Even though the OEM added a cable in an attempt to prevent such an occurrence, it could only maintain the total length of the tube. In order to solve this problem, our engineers developed a new type of tube with a coating bonded to the monocoil and braid with the same flexibility and dimensions. The outer wall of this tube is unusually thick for regular light guide tubes and required the development of new materials in order to achieve that wall thickness. As a result, that while maintaining the same function, dimensions, appearance and feeling of the OEM design, it has been upgraded to make it a more durable repair. The second example is when the doctor would lean on the light guide connector assembly and break the chassis inside. This can sever the light guide, crack the housing, it can also cause damage to the air connector when the light prong twists where it's attached to the processor. And this is a major problem. Having a durable part is more than desirable, it's necessary. Our engineers developed a more robust part less prone to breakage. And by changing from a cast pot metal part to a machine 6061 aluminum, we can fill the voids and make it strong to eliminate this type of material failure. In conclusion, instead of duplicating the part, we'll make it stronger. Another example will be our featured product, bending sections. We made the bending sections functionally equivalent to the OEM specs and have developed ways of making them more robust, easier to load the components through, smoother, and with a full range of angulation. While tackling these scope problems sent to you by the doctors, we need to think inside and outside of the box to solve these problems and to reduce or eliminate unnecessary repairs. Our technical department is composed of experienced scope repair technicians and optical, material, and mechanical engineers. We support you in your daily repairs, from scope diagnostics to tailored materials and parts, as well as in repairing and assembling that requires skills, technique, and knowledge. Please feel free to email us or call us 
we would like to work with you to become part of your team so that you can boost your repair efficiency and reduce your operational costs.